Hi, folks, and welcome to A More Civilized Age. I'm Matt. Joining me from Twin Sons Foundation is, of course, Brian and Dylan. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. Ah, thank you for having us. I'm glad we could crash the uh, More Civilized Age party once more. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, too. Now, uh, two of our regular guests, my regular co-host, could not be here. Uh, Meg is sick, sent me an email to discuss the topic for us, which I will read later on. Uh, but she has the same thing that Ryan had last month. Oh, and fun. Ryan, I don't know. He's MIA. For the first time ever, he hasn't responded back. Um, he responded back to me about something else a few weeks ago, but has not responded back about more civilized age. So I don't know where he is. Um, usually he responds back whether he can make it or not. So either way, either way, it's okay. Like I, I texted him today. I didn't hear back. I emailed him when I emailed y'all earlier this week. And I texted him last week, too, but he must be busy or maybe he's dead. And that's just an AI robot running his channel now. <laughs> you know? Would it be less? No, that would be there would be a dead giveaway. It'd be far less efficient than what he is doing. <laughs> <laughs> far less offensive, I'm sure, too. But anyway, um, so a few things we're going to talk about today. we got a lot of great topics here. But the first one I want to talk about and the reason that these guys were coming on in the first place uh, was one. They're, they're good friends of mine. They're great. They're great guys. But uh, to, again, uh, now the uh, talk about the the big event for Twin Sons, the big charitable, you know, ten locations across air, across across America. Talk about this a little bit. Okay, so um, uh, this is going to go off the premise, of course, that most people who would be watching this would recognize the fact that we are coming up very quickly here on the ten year, um, I guess, anniversary of what we call Death Star Day in the expanding universe community. Uh, the day uh, on which the expanded universe was announced to be discontinued officially uh, by Disney Lucasfilm. And so, you know, many of us who were part of this um, kind of movement, expanded universe movement early on, we started the the whole give us legends trend very early on. And, uh, you know, from that, eventually we had those billboards go up and then Twin Sons came out of that. And since then, we've been doing a lot of good things with the Twin Sons Foundation with everybody's help. Um, so kind of in recognition of that 10 year anniversary, we figured, well, why don't we just go back to our origins a little bit and uh, name our new uh, fundraising effort to give them legends uh, campaign um, okay. kind of a twist on that. And um, usually every year, Twin Sons tries to do at least one to two donation events in a given year. We don't really do, you know, we don't go all out. But uh, this year we decided, I think it's time, you know, we go all out. We're going to go uh, try and make uh, make the funds uh, for about 10 different events throughout this year, you know, one event for every year that we've been going on uh, as the expanding universe community, uh, trying to fight for the continuation of the expanding universe. And uh, we've got a few locations lined up. We have ideas for most of the locations and we've got a little bit of a um, wiggle room for the last few, uh, but we're going to be funding this thing throughout the entire year. It takes about $500, give or take, to fund a single event. So the ultimate goal being about 5000 and uh, we just started this. We haven't really been pushing it too hard. A lot of us have been really busy, kind of off on the side, but we're also not ready to do our first event until I think we're looking at May. So we've got a little more time to raise enough for at least our first one to two events. And uh, we're currently sitting at about, as of this recording, $400. Uh, so we're only $100 away from already making our first event happen. That's great. That's great. I, I, I also want to announce something for that fundraiser, too. Um, if you would like to come on a more civilized age, ladies and gentlemen, of one hundred dollars or more donation to Twin Sons. Brian will keep me updated on that. Uh, gives you an opportunity to come on. We'll invite you on. You get to pick a topic. We will discuss it. Um, but you get to come on the flagship show. Um, and Brian, you just keep up with that. And as the thing slowly funds and everything will uh, i'll be glad to have them all in there of course yeah no we're keeping an eye on it and uh dylan did you want to say anything about the uh, fundraiser events kind of maybe some of the locations we're looking at doing that stuff let's see so we have um i forget the hospital i always forget the hospital in orlando um in florida but that one's actually we've been we uh we kind of hinted at it for a while now that we that one was that that's that's the one that's been in the works since last year um, uh, just for, uh, for, this is for Hollywood, Florida, right? Hollywood, Florida. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Joe, uh, Joe DiMaggio's children's hospital. Joe yeah. DiMaggio's children's hospital. Mm -hmm. That's what it, that one was, uh, it was act we were actually in the works of it, uh, with this last year that was actually potentially going to maybe be in conjunction with, um, the one that Marcel did in, um, Toronto. and, um, sick kids foundation, 
Yes. But that ended up getting postponed just because the, uh, the hospital wanted it next year in, in May. So we were like, that's fine. We have something for next year. So uh, excited we can finally announce, announce that one. We're also planning on returning to some locations. Um, Children's Hospital, Orange County, if they'll answer my email. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, that's always a tricky thing. So a little bit behind the scenes for Twin Sons <laughs> is we have to reach out to these uh, these hospitals. And we got to find a lot of them have their own like uh, charity organizers mm-hmm. or, or somebody who's in a position that organizes events like what we'd like to do. Um, and, you know, they have schedules that aren't necessarily what you would think would be typical or they're just really busy people because this is kind of the thing that they do on the side kind of like we do or sometimes um, so. there's a little bit of tur- uh, turnover so like the yeah. person we, we've had this at shock i know but like the person that actually organizes the hospital events there's a bit of like a rotation of like of over the years of it being the different people but like mm-hmm. the other people around them at the hospital like they remember us but it's like the event organizer like every time we've done it has been a new person reintroduce yourselves but the second they find out from somebody there that we've done there before they're like oh yes please get those guys back now asap please thank you <laughs> so we, we always have a good time um but yeah you were saying children's and hospital then looking at phoenix children's phoenix hospital Ch- it's been a couple of years since we've done that one. Um, it was actually the last donation we were supposed to do there was actually in 2020, but because of everything that happened with COVID that got delayed until 2022 is when we finally got those books over to them. They were sitting in my house for about a year and a half. It was painful mm-hmm. just looking at them, just like, oh, <laughs> must get them over there. But uh, yeah, Children's Hospital, uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital will be one of them. Um, you know, we're looking at, uh, we haven't cited a, a location yet, but I know Marcel was saying he was looking at doing another one up in the Toronto area, keeping us now international for donations in Twin Sons. Awesome. Um, and our volunteer for Florida is actually a newer one. I know, Matt, you said you might be helping us out with something near yourself. Uh, yeah. We got a few yeah. other people. We got a few yeah. other people are looking at things. And, 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 and one of the craziest things, and this is why you got to get you got to get this funded, folks, because one of the craziest things there is, is the last donation that came to our area here. I called Brian after this. I took a picture. I was like, this is like the all star <laughs> batting lineup for every Star Wars fan. It's like every good, really excellent. I mean, the next things we have to get them. There is going to be a copy of Crystal Star in this thing on purpose. We're giving <laughs> because now we've got to go through all the mediocre stuff. But the thing is, though, they're going to have a complete collection in their school library, which is going to be the cool thing about it. Hmm. But I think it's funny that we will def. I want to if they don't have it already. I don't think they do. If they don't already have a copy of Crystal Star, we're going to be getting the copy of Crystal Star to people. Yep. I mean, that's how crazy it's going to be. Yep. No, we'll do. We'll do pretty much every Planet Star Wars. Twilight. Look out! <laughs> as long as I'll the price is good, we'll make it happen. <laughs> well, yeah, as long as they have it. But the thing is, though, uh, what where to go from there is down. But you know what, though, it makes it beautiful because there's going to be this nice little set collection in there. That I'll be honest, if I was a kid, I'd I'd haul off with it. <laughs> uh, if no one was looking, well, why I'd do you throw, think we have to keep going back to some of these locations? I'd no, just kidding. You and my, I, as a kid, I would have thrown a few in my backpack and never come back. That's the no, it, it, in reality, we kind of treat them a little bit differently because your donation event would likely be another uh, at a at a, a school, um, and they school. usually tend to keep their their uh, collection in one piece. But at the hospitals, you're obviously giving them out to different patients yeah, who aren't yeah. always there. Fit, so we can fit. do a lot of the same books at the hospitals, but, but we, we, you know, we'll hit hospitals, mm-hmm. we'll hit uh, mm-hmm. the libraries, uh, schools, we'll hit all these places so, as possible tar- uh, yeah. donation targets this year. Yeah. We did two donations here. The first one, I remember a lot of the kids were excited to see them and the teacher, uh, cause they had a class going on in the library at the time. I don't know what was going on, but there was a class being held. I didn't realize that. And I walked in and I, she was about to start. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just here to donate. She said, oh, that's fine. She said, what are they? She went, yeah. She said, yeah, I've read those. I went, whatever. And then she started talking about it. I was like, oh, hey, you have read the EU. I said, Whoa. <laughs> and so now all the other kids are very interested because that's not the topic. And they want to feed her and keep getting her to talk about it. Yeah. But I took a picture with all the kids. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, The second time was during the pandemic, which is why we're having a bunch of issues on where to go. And so you asked me, hey, it's getting because hospitals were saying no. And a lot of schools were saying no. And the school said yes. But this time I didn't make it past the front desk. I could not Mm. go into the school, which I understood. Yeah. And I had a problem with. But the secretary took me into her office, sent me down, thanked me and everything. 
no, I can't go back into the school. We're, we're not, it's not open for people outside the school, not, only teachers and what parent, I said, like, that's fine. And so she was going to deliver it over there, but thank me for it. And they were very kind and everything, but you know, that was very nice of them. So, um, but this time I think that rules back, back wide open, the rules of black stuff again. So it's, it's time yeah. to get back in there. So it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be yeah. exciting. No, and we'll try to team up with the 501st where possible on those hospital visits as we have in the past. Obviously, we have good uh, communications mm -hmm. with the garrisons we've worked with before. But um, I think we also had some good communications up in Toronto for that donation as well. So it's it's entirely possible that all of these will end up being big events when they happen. And for that $500, we usually bring about 40 books. We tend to get a little bit more if uh, we're able to make the money work a little bit more. But, um, you know, about 40 books is our, our goal for most of the hospital visits. Yeah, they're not splurging on it you know oh. dylan's going to eat at subway he's not going to outback to get that steak he always <laughs> wants. that's not where the money's going uh, no that's the hilarious thing is we always say that we actually uh we're not even a non-profit we're a negative profit, negative we, profit yeah, <laughs> we definitely definitely. lose money every but, year <laughs> but again again folks if you want to be on the flagship show go ahead and make a donation it's tax deductible i know that because i just did my taxes this week got to add on a couple hundred bucks uh from twin sons so that's always nice but uh, it's, and of course, it goes to a great cause, just getting right. people open up. And this and this d is how fans of the expanded universe grow. They read these books. They love them. They want to read more. And again, it's not Crystal Star. It's the good stuff they're given. You know, the the, the cream of the, the uh, cream a la creme is what they're given. So well, go depends ahead. On who I you thought, ask about Crystal Star, because a lot of those more recent fans have really come around the Crystal Star. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you know, the Waru. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great and powerful. All pa we should all if if I ever make it rich, I'm gonna have a Waru themed swimming pool. <laughs> so dive on in anytime. It's gonna have it's gold gonna throw in a jello. Or... <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make it a little bit warm. We're gonna heat the water up a little bit and make it a little syrupy too. You know, so you know it's it's that's gonna be nice and kind of you know like swimming through. I don't know. Um, what's that? What's that? Uh, thick liquid called? Um, that they give to sick people and babies um oh no i forgot i forgot what it's called like you know the little flavored uh electrolytes or whatever uh, had the yeah. whatever that is so it's going to be a pool filled with that with yellow scales everywhere the walro pool we get to ten i I'll, I'll put one in myself um <laughs> all right so there you go and again you can go to www.twins-sons.net as you see there on my list which is i'm just going to keep it like that for the rest of our discussion here all right, so next topic here is a short topic. As you know, super, or maybe you don't know, the Supernatural Encounters uh, paperback editions are available if you want to get them. They got three great covers, volumes one, two, and three. I heard three is more of the appendices, the pictures and stuff, so read the description. If you don't want three, that's fine. But if I you would kinda recommend want getting three if you're getting one and two, though. It will be yeah, horrible. if you're getting it all, you know, it's well. <laughs> and it's a great th deal. And you're like, why don't you just put it in one? I don't know if there's a paperback that can hold that much. So I don't I'm, think that, that binding would hold at all. Yeah, I don't think that binding would have hold in two. So uh, dividing is three is the wise thing. And I wanted to show something because something came up to my attention the other day that I wanted to uh, address. And I clicked the wrong button. I had this thing queued to go and I just clicked the wrong button and clicked off of it. That <laughs> is awesome. So here we go. We're at Supernatural Encounters here. Uh, you just type it into Amazon right here. And then I'm going to click on volume one here and i want to read we got some reviews here and i found something interesting so looking at where's my reviews here they are okay so we have one one star a bunch of five stars but if you look verified purchase five stars the sim real my, my quote this I, that's not me but the sim real in star wars is what i called it you got this one verified purchase uh oh unverified one star Un and then this one not a verified purchase one star and all they're doing is throwing hate on it okay yep. i'm not saying people can't hate it but guess what folks this is just it's 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 rife with misspellings also <laughs> not a verified purchase i personally discard these these are just people who just want to just downgrade the thing you can look at a fake review they did not buy this they're all saying uh my friend gave it to me you know or something he didn't buy it and then here's another one star that they didn't like it either. Give it unlicensed material, which you know is false. Um, but uh, one star unverified. 
But then we go to the verified purchases and five stars. Now, if I was to see another, you know, review that had five, you know, uh, one star and was verified, you know, there it Give is, it verified, some unverified, some verified. So, you know, and then you, you can go to the other ones too. There's an, uh, what is the other one? Uh, I don't know where it was. Hold on, let me go back. Uh, there's two, may have been in two. This is the I first time I'm actually covers, seeing, though. I was going to say, I think it's the first time I've seen the covers up close like that uh, on the paperback yeah. versions. They're pretty nice. Which hmm. really nice. They're really and, beautiful covers. And, and I'm assuming the, the art's the same in these books as it is in the hardcover copy that I have from yeah. uh, Legends Con. The artwork in these books is really good. Just flipping yeah. through them. Oh, they, yeah. they did some good work. Really these. awesome. Oh, look at this. Review with images. Look at that. Hmm, somebody bought a few copies, looks like. Wow, that looks really nice. Nice. Okay, so here we here we have five star the, verified no, hey, purchase. There was a very good but, caption on that. Buy it while it's there because we don't know how long it'll be up. Yeah, mm -hmm. buy it while it's here. That's correct. And then we have five stars. Okay, but not you know. So it says Amazon customer. I don't know about that. I'll even be honest. I I would I would boot this one out because it's not verified. Not to say that you have to buy it for me, but when I look at unverified purchases, I do not. I think someone's just trying to, they, they have a, a, a hard on for whoever's doing it and they don't want to give them credit, yeah. you know, or if they're just doing five stars, there may be a friend. That's what I think. I'm not saying that's who this is because this is spelled right. The other one is rife with misspellings though. The other two are. And that just tells me just someone really illiterate hates this and they, they never read it. Let me see. Okay. Here, here's what I'm talking about. Okay. This one, verified purchase, five stars. Uh Oh, unverified. Same person again. Boom. One star. Limited to gargle, grupal, glooper, shoop, crafted, hyper, make. <laughs> what? Yeah, whatever. Okay. And then here's another verified person, verified person, verified person. So, uh, and again, I, 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 I kick this one out. Amazon customer sounds kind of ra ra random, but uh, I kick this one out with the one star reviews because only listen to the verified, the people who are reading it. And here's the thing. I'm not saying that you can't, you know, you, can, you, you, you must love this book, you know, give it a shot. It's not for everyone. I even said in my review, it is not for everyone. It is not for the average EU fan. It is for the EU fan who wants to know it all, mm -hmm. who wants to know every crack and crevice of the celestials and the beginning and the end and everything else uh, before well, the, I think that I think that is a lot of EU fans, though, because that's the whole point of the expanded universe. That was to a dive lot of the, that, that's, you know, deep down through the iceberg of legend there. You're really going deep at that point. Um, okay. I found it enjoyable. Marcel does a live uh, uh, mm -hmm. show where he talks about it a lot. And it's just looking forward really to going great. back to that after I There's do go this. through and read it, because I haven't read my copy yet. Um, but oh, I've heard a lot, I, a lot of good I things. Finished, I caught back up on him. And it's so funny. It's so fun to see fans are just they're really into it. And it's it captures the way I feel when I'm reading through it and how they get excited about this. And I'm like, whoa, because the whole time I was smiling, giggling, laughing, going, ooh, Mark said, what are you reading? I said, Supernatural Encounter. What's that Star Wars? Oh, Star Wars book. I said, yeah, this is a great connection. Here. So um, well, I really enjoy I, under it. I, I will admit that that's something I would never tell someone to start on. I would never <laughs> say someone read it. Well, that's what I, I was going to say is this book tends to have a lot of connections to a lot of other things. Like you have yeah. to, you have to know, you have to know the expanded universe to really get the most out of it. That's my mm -hmm. understanding of this yeah. book. And I did get to read it in chronological order. I oh, waited because nice. when it came out, I was just a few books away from, you know, that time. So I say, you know what? I really want to read it. I want to stop what I'm doing right now and read that book, but I have the opportunity to read it in chronological order. So I waited nice. a month or so because i had to catch up reading about nine books or whatever and then finally read in chronological order don't don't you should save this for last because it has a lot of abelos stuff that's going to just you know you're yep. not going to get it in chronological <laughs> order so it's meant to be one of these things that comes out you know chronologically it's fine where they placed it it's fine where joe placed it but the thing is though for a star wars fan you've needed to read it all to see the massive connections that are made through this. And it's a lot of fun. And when I had him on here, um, of course he's, he's, he's pulling in, uh, you know, what, what's it called? Uh, public domain stories that inspired George Lucas. 
nice. to write about Wookiees, about Ewoks. I came this close to buying the Fuzzies trilogy <laughs> when I, when he talked about it. I was like, oh my goodness, because I'd never heard of that before, and I didn't, I thought it was something he was making up, but um, he showed me the books and everything, and it was I was like, wow, and you can get the trade paperback and whatever of all three. And I was like, I kind of want to read about the Fuzzies now, you know, um, the precursor to the Ewoks, and of course. You know, anyone who writes ideas like that comes up with, you know, they riffed off something they really love oh, yeah. and make their own and stuff like that. And, you know, not, not that anyone is that the real it. trick for most authors these days is to, you know, well, take a not story you love and try to original. I'm just saying <laughs> that, well, I mean, you look, Tolkien is the inspiration of modern day fantasy. It's true. Everyone read Tolkien said I can do and, and a lot of people did expound and make different. To but, you know. I can't remember who it was, but I think it was Stephen King, the book on we, the only Stephen King book I've, 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 I've read in its own writing mm. that he says, you know, you have all these people trying to chase, trying to, they want more of Tolkien, but the, the beauty of Tolkien is there is no more coming out. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's perfect because they didn't overstay its welcome. It went off with a bang and Christopher Tolkien's digging up stuff and that's fine. But the thing is, though, there will be no new adventures. There will be no one picking like Sherlock Holmes. If it would have stopped at Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, it'd have been perfect. But they continued on. Not many people are interested in everything Sherlock, but the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle ones are actually spot on excellent. Read those several times myself, and I got what he was saying. Like the Frank E. Baum Wizard of Oz series, you know, when people took it over from there, I'm not interested in reading the rest of it. Just Frankie Bomb. But um, e either way, though, either way, interesting. Well, yeah. So there, there's, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, definitely make sure you pick them up on Amazon if you plan on getting hard copies. But I think Joe also has the entire thing on his website, correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can you can look at it digitally, download it for free. It's totally fine. But people wanted paperback copies or paperback copies. Yeah. But people wanted copies. I get it. I like real copies, too. Um, only if you did the Crown Funder years ago did you get the hardback or if you're at Legends Con. But uh, but now that their paperbacks are available, now people can finally get it, put it in their collection, and it's at a cheap price too. So yeah, I was gonna say the pricing on that was not bad considering how many pages of content he put yeah. together for this. Over yeah. a thousand. <laughs> yeah, over a thousand well, paperbacks. Well, I, I, that up. If you if you saw any of the feedback from the end of Legends Cons from anybody who picked up that book, it was we don't know how we got this through TSA. It could be a veritable weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe people like Alex could even pick it up. It's like the sword of the stone that dude's so weak, he probably fell over. Like, not, not saying you should do this, but you could probably hollow it out and like fit an actual gun in there and like smuggle it through a prison. Probably. Did you just it. say a gun? Because I think you could probably fit a couple. <laughs> wow! Wow! It's that wow. big. Is it, By is the way, you can no. catch Dylan at twinsonsfoundation.net. <laughs> <laughs> and ask and him what so he's really tomorrow thinking. in the Twin Sons Communications chat, I'm going to have to tell everybody that we are actually having to dismiss Dylan as vice president. <laughs> yeah, vice president. Our vice president. Scandal. It's a scandal going on. You know, you know there are far worse. We said far worse too. things in those chats, right? <laughs> Yeah, but only the NSA and and our you know whoever else is looking at that chat knows that. <laughs> Dylan's sitting back going, "Can you imagine how much fentanyl you can put in that thing if you hollow it out?" No. Wait, what? What? Yeah, you can get a lot of drugs in there. I mean, I know these like these pills they are very small, but you can just like get a dozen or maybe a couple hundred of those. What? Okay, there you go. You could you could you could brew meth in a hollow copy of that, Dylan. While we're at it. What other illegal things could we do? <laughs> Too Let's many things because it's thing. massive. <laughs> you could kill a very a, a medium sized rodent and hide it in there too. A, someone's cat could fit in there. If you don't like your neighbor's cat, hollow out the book. Probably. Actually, yeah. it could use, you, just, you could use it for like an enclosure for like lizards. It's big enough, probably for that. <laughs> See here, I was just gonna say you could hollow it out, put Dylan, a log in there, Dylan, and it'd be difficult to bullseye. Dylan, please. Please copyright write the like article that. of what other things you could do with that book besides <laughs> it. I swear to you, I'll put it out on April Fool's this? Day. <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. That but would anyway, be an awesome article. I love it. That would be an awesome article. All right, so look for that from Dylan. He won't count the sales on Amazon, but he will <laughs> mock the enormity of this book. So there you go. Um, I did hey, too, I man. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do some. 
I don't need a bench press. All I need is that book and do a couple of reps and I'm oh, good. Yeah. yeah, you're good. It's, that's a workout in itself, definitely. That, strap that thing on your back and hike. <laughs> you know, that thing's a, woo, don't swim with it. You'll sink to the bottom. Yeah, you're not, you're not coming back up with that on your back. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right. So switching topics now, finally, to the final topic we're going to talk about today. And the main topic here was collecting. Folks, mm -hmm. uh, as of this video, the 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 uh, article hasn't come out, but at the end of the month, I had Adam Bryant, Bryant from Red Five Reviews write an article. We, we I, I talked to him regularly, and he was talking about the frustrations of getting a complete collection, it, particularly him, his hardbacks of all these things, because it can be very hard. And um, I said, you know, that's very interesting, all, all your talking points there. Can you put that in an article for me? Because I think that's something that a lot of people would be interested in reading. And he did, and it's marvelous. I can't wait for it to come out. We have a lot of good stuff coming out, but that one's coming out. And I'm, I'm not going to talk about his topic. I'm waiting for that article to come out because I, I, I have the, 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 the pleasure and the curse of reading these things when they come out. And, and wanting to discuss them, them immediately. And so sometimes I'll talk about it and it goes, where's that article, Matt? Oh, <laughs> it didn't come out yet. Spoilers, you know. <laughs> something uh, for you to look forward to. That was a preview. Yeah, something for you to look forward to. But anyway, so mine was about collecting, the pains of collecting, what advice you would give, what are you trying to still find out there that you can't. Because um, obviously it's not hard. It wasn't hard for me because I got all this stuff when it came out. A lot of us did. Yeah. We yep. got it the moment it came out. So we only paid cover price. Everyone's lucky. Yeah, it is very fortunate. And when Disney took over Lucasfilm, I that 2014 was the biggest year ever for me buying EU. What was I buying? I bought all the Ewoks children's books. I bought all the, the little random stuff, the TIE Fighter little booklet, the X-Wing. Everything I knew existed, yep. but just it, it wasn't high priority. Yet. So you know what? I think these may be collectibles now that they're going to be gone. So I bought up everything. Still didn't pay that much. And now that stuff is worth tons more right. than when I paid for it way back then. And I mean, I was very lucky, but I was having shipments come to my house every week. I was reading tons <laughs> of, you know, secondhand expanding universe stuff. And I was loving it. Maga, you know, the role playing magazines. I, I, I bought the drive through RPG. I can't remember what the three big ones are for RPGs, but they had all three of them in digital content for a bundled price. I was like, sold. And so I got them all digitally, lost the digital download years ago. But I, but you know me, I printed them all out, baby. So I have them in binders and stuff. And, you know, just swallowed everything I could, a little minute, like the Queen's Amulet. I knew it existed. I didn't want it, but I went ahead and got it. Now that thing's probably still cheap. But the thing is, though, there's a few things that I went ahead and got. It's like, you know what? I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. I'm going to grab this. And, um, you know, it's 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 fun. It's fun. It's fun stuff to collect. But uh, no, what I wanted to talk about here was uh, collecting. And uh, Meg couldn't be here, so she sent me an email. And I'm gonna read her email first, then we'll discuss. Okay. And she said, "My thoughts on tonight's topic: Do not buy any Bantam hardcovers for more than twenty bucks. You can find excellent condition copies for cheaper. Uh, 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 science fiction book club hardcovers are another matter." On my recent trip to Canada, she said she found the first two volumes of the Adventure Journals. She had no idea that they were bigger than the mass market paperback, but smaller than the trade paperback books uh, because she'd only seen PDF scans. But she's not sure if she'll collect them all, but she said they were fun to read. And yes, they are very fun, but watch out. There's a few of them that are impossible to find. Mm -hmm. You know, That's sadly, true. some are more common than others. I don't know why that is. It just is. But I know there's, I can't remember which number it is, 14 or whatever. One of them is like super rare to find. Everyone's missing. <clears throat> I can't remember what the numbers are, but there, there's a one or two numbers that people are constantly missing of those. Now, the thing is, guess what, folks? I bought them all at a store, <laughs> at, a, at a role play, at a, at, a, at a comic store. They don't even, the building doesn't even exist anymore. But I finally relented. Because the guy told me, I said, I said, what are they? I said, oh, they have RPG stuff in it. I'm not interested. Yeah, they have short stories too. I went, they have short stories in them? He went, yes. And I looked back through and I saw one, two, three. I was like, bought. And so I said, how many of these do you have? He went, well, let's dig in. And he had the entire set. He went, here's one set. I said, I'll buy them all. And he sold them to me for cover price, which for me was a lot of money. I was like, ugh. 
But I was like, you know what? I got to have the short stories. And I enjoyed the reading them. But now those things are way – anyone who's going to say, looking at the price now, I'm pretty sure uh, you're looking at that price then going, that was a steal. Yeah, but you look at the cover <laughs> price times how many there were. And I was paying over 100 bucks. And I was oh, yeah. It's not cheap. And but, I was uh, like, oh, this is a Try to do that now. now. I, 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 you know, I must, I must be a completist. I must have it all. And so I bought it and I did enjoy it, but I thought, man, I overpaid for those. Well, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Now I've underpaid. Yep. But so there's, there's a lot of things, like I said, to be thankful for, to be happy about that we got. Um, I do feel bad for the collector these days. Uh, yes. First off, I have no qualms about collecting legends banner stuff. In fact, I said this one time when I went to the school, one of the kids came up. He came by the office. He went, oh, cool, more Star Wars. He goes, hey, so I read this book, and he it was a new – I said, I don't know that one. That must be New Ken. He went, okay, New Ken. He said, yeah, I didn't know that. It was awful. It was awful. This kid tells me that. I was like, really? You didn't like it? I hated it. The ones in our library were so cool. I got, I got my mom to buy me another one that came out, and that one just sucked. Hmm. And I was like, yeah, but that one – I said, look. He said, well, how do I know which one's which? I said – and I grabbed one of the paper. I said – you see this Legends banner? This is a seal of excellence. <laughs> this is what tells you when a story is going to be good. And part of the old key is like, okay, Legends banner. God, I'll only get stuff with Legends banner now. So that's and the benefit of that Legends banner for if you're a new fan. And I was surprised when I think I mentioned this when we talked about Legends Con in the past, but I was surprised how many of those people had not been into the Legends fandom until basically that convention. And so for all of them looking to get some new Legends content into their lives, obviously finding those things, that banner is going to make a huge difference. For those oh. who have already been into the Legends content or the Expanded Universe content as we all know it, that Legends banner doesn't change the content of the book. <laughs> it's still the same good story it was before. So, yeah, I've never been against the banner. Um, I always saw it as a potential helpful thing in the future, provided they don't do anything weird with it in the future, which they haven't so far. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's great. It's um, the legends banner there. I, people are trying to get, well, I like uniformity, Matt. I have some without and some with, I want to get the ones with, don't worry. Either way, if you're buying legend stuff, you're doing them a favor. Delray knows what sells. Mm -hmm. That's why they keep reprinting the new stuff in essentials, which Dylan's going to give us an announcement that I've never heard of. I haven't heard of. I'm hearing about it live with Dylan. Oh, we'll get okay. to that later. I guess we're, yeah, okay, we'll get in that later. Yeah, we'll right? get to that later. We'll get to that later. I want to save that for last. I, I, I bet that's going to derail this conversation the moment I hear about it. But um, <laughs> yeah, big, I'm at saving the surprise, but uh, for himself, I don't. I love surprises, not this. I think time, another right? thing, if you're getting into collecting, you need to realize and you need to bite this bullet. There, it is impossible to have both an all non Legends banner collection and an all Legends banner collection. Yeah, there are some things that for some reason still do not have a banner on them. And there are some things that only have a banner on them. Yep. And like, you're just going to have to live with that quite honestly. Yeah, if, you want yeah. to get collection. if you're hoping to finish your collection anytime soon, that is definitely true. Like, yeah, I mean, you could be looking for stuff for the rest of your life otherwise, and you still might not find it. And still in the yeah. same. I, I know mean, that they, oh, go ahead. You were saying there were there were you were thinking for advice for new collectors or collectors still looking. I think I've got four sources for them if they're looking for books in particular. Okay, go ahead, and then Dylan so, will give advice. Go ahead. Your first, your first place to look for is a used bookstore. Um, that's where I've been that's finding a lot of number one spot. Yep, <clears throat> a lot of the hardcovers I've been picking up, which is what I've been looking for, is hardcovers of whatever I have already. Um, I've been finding there, and they're not that expensive. They're usually like 10 bucks, 12 bucks, yep. and it's nothing. Uh, and usually they're in pretty good condition too. So definitely look there. Uh, look at antique shops of all places. You'll find some great stuff in antique shops. Um, you know, and it might not be just books that you find there too. I found a lot of the audio cassettes for the books. Um, a lot of them obviously, you know, abridged, but um, still audio cassettes for books, uh, the books themselves. Uh, <laughs> my parents have made a habit of finding the old movie posters with autographs on them for me. So those you know, are all over my house now, which is awesome. Um, another good uh, location is actually auctions, uh, just online auctions, that kind of thing. Um, I had zero of the comics uh, up until about five years ago. And now I have almost all of the comics because that's my dad likes to do is likes to look for auctions. And he saw basically entire sets of the original Marvel run of comics, DC comics, all that stuff. You can find very 
very easily apparently on these auction houses. And then of course, uh, number four, which is a resource that I haven't quite been able to locate myself, but uh, is raiding Christopher Nelson's house. But aside from that, yeah, you're good. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me, let me, that's good advice there. Let me add flea markets. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. flea, flea markets and I'll, I'll be honest, flea markets and used bookstores and antique stores. You're going to be addicted to go into flea markets, used bookstores, and because they're just fun, period. Yeah. They're and it is. Too. And it's and it's the fun that going those is just the hunt for it. I mean, yeah. if you're not desperate to find that thing, you'll never it, it'll and always be, be honest, fun. not every antique store has books, but when they do, they have a library. Mm -hmm. Not every mm -hmm. flea market has books, but when they do, they have a library or they have mm -hmm. several shelves. I mean, so it's 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 feast or famine on a lot of these places, mm -hmm. but you'll know when you find a good one because I've seen them everywhere. And then sometimes it's just random. Like the and I, and I regret this big time now, but years ago. 10 years or whatever, I saw a complete set, just, just, it was about, around a bunch of antiques, a complete set of Galaxy of Fear. Oh, wow. 20 bucks. That's it? That's great. I, I passed it by because I said, I've already bought it. I don't need it. 20 bucks? That's a steal. Should have caught it. But yep. the thing is, though, no one knew what it was. They just bundled them together. It was, they collected them when they were a kid or their kid did, and they want to sell it now. They don't, well, I mean, and realistically, how many people are actually going to know to look at an antique store for Star Wars books? Yeah, that's not where you're going to look. No. Um, and to be honest, so wherever you travel, get 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 your app out and look for flea markets near me, used bookstores near me, and then just make a list and say, you know, if you're traveling with friends or family, go, hey, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to make a few pit stops. Exactly 17. <laughs> but it's going to be a fun trip. Because there's always yeah. stuff for other people, non-Star Wars fans, yep. to look at, and, and like I, 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 it is my Achilles heel. I, I, if I didn't have four little kids who would touch and break everything in the store, <laughs> I would go antique shopping my entire. I would go cross country, and in fact, there is in Phoenix my favorite flea market in the nation, the Brass Armadillo. Uh, I cannot yeah. get. I have yet to the fastest I've been in and out. And I'm some guy who can go in and out like that. The fastest was a little over an hour, hour, 10 minutes. I timed it because the first time I spent four and a half, I was late to meeting someone. I can't remember. Maybe it been you or so, but I stayed too long in the, and I had to I go think that was me because I remember you bringing this up last time. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't every, every row I had to look at, but the fastest I've ever been through because there's so good uh, turnover there, meaning they put new product on sale very quickly there. And it, there's all I cannot escape without buying something. Even when yep. I think I'm going to make it out this time, no, something grabs me and I got to have it. Yep. And uh, it's every time. It's every time I go. And I've just, I've, and that's one big thing I miss about traveling to Phoenix so much because that was the first thing I do when I get off the plane. Well, well and I that's another Colbert, one, of those, one of those fun oh, things about out of And then I go. Yeah. Well, yeah. So both of them. <laughs> but that's the fun thing about those antique shops is even if you are looking for something you might find something you weren't looking for and you'd be like wait what this exists what is this and that's yeah. it's just one of those places that you'll encounter things that you weren't expecting to find and that's mm -hmm. what's part of the fun yeah dylan anything to add so i would say this is something that i've done before i collected star wars because my main collecting hobby is coins and i i just have this habit and I, when I went and got, um, actually decided to, because before I actually collected Star Wars, I read all the books through libraries. And then around the time of the decanonization, I, I thought to myself, well, I should probably try to get these in physical uh, in some way. So I, I, I did what I did with coins. And that is, and this is especially important if you are going after not just like books, but like actually like if you're going to go after like comics or, um, or like a full series, because there is a lot of stuff out there. Make a list of what you need of like before you even purchase your first one, figure out what do I want to collect, make a list of everything on it. And I would go one step further. Uh, and this is easier. This is easier with coins because you can just look up this stuff up. It's going to be it's going to require a little more research for uh, what you're doing, but find out what the market price of what you're looking for of everything is write that all down next to like next to the book say like it's this it goes for around this look for sold listings right mm -hmm. and then once you have all of that just take a step back look at what that total number is going to be 
and ask yourself the question if that's the number. <laughs> Are you interested in getting in this, really? <laughs> Do you feel lucky, punk? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree on that one. It is but good even, to know like, what you're getting into. But also just keep that list on you. Like I I'll, no, it is I make these little, I make these little lists. I, I, I fold them up and I keep them in my wallet. And then when I walk in and I, I just go like you, you open it up and you see, okay, do they have this and this and this? And you might think, oh yeah, I'll remember everything. <laughs> but like you don't realize that like um Young Jedi Knights, they're not numbered. There's 14 books, they're not numbered. How are you going to, if you only have, and we go into like a, most of the time, especially with the bigger series, they're not going to have a complete set. They're going to have like maybe, yep. you know, 30 to 40% of them. How are you going to remember like which ones you act? Because the last thing you want, and I'm, everyone who's collected has done this. I know you have, you've bought something at the, at the, at the store that you thought you didn't have. And you come home and realize you got a duplicate. Yep. Everyone has done it. Even <laughs> And you, it's a it's a yeah, terrible it's feeling. collectible too. Yeah, you realize, oh no, I already got this one. I had so many, I didn't realize I got a double. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think everybody does that. I definitely have too. But no, that's a great point. Definitely having a list is important, um, especially with as many varieties and as many things as you can be going after in the Legends or Expanded Universe fandom. There are going to be times where you come across something, and be like, do I have this? Is this even on my list? And you're going to want to know. So definitely have that list handy, even if it's just like a PDF on your phone or something. Yeah, I guess phone handy to have. But I've been, I was doing this before. Uh, I, I, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I learned a lot of that, too, from, again, my dad. He collects a lot of, uh, he's into Thor, like the original Marvel mm -hmm. run of Thor. So he collects a lot of the Thor comics. He had yeah. an Excel sheet that he would just put together listing all the Thor comics. And he had the prices listed that you could find, just mm -hmm. like you were saying, market prices. And he would just check that off. I know for a fact he still hasn't collected the first couple issues because they're just too darn expensive. But someday he will. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, someday. especially like, if you're going to do something crazy, like go for the entire Mar Marvel run in single issue, definitely, like... <laughs> You know, well, definitely. Say, like I said, you might be able to find that in auction, like uh, like I might have. <laughs> but you're most likely you're going to find three or four at a time, and then you're not going to remember. Then once you have forty or fifty, you're just not going to remember off the top of your head what you're missing. Make but even list, if you do, like, and Dylan's right, even if you do find them in auction, like I was saying, you'll still end up with duplicates because they'll sell them in lots that will overlap yeah. what you already have. <clears throat> That's true. That's true. So true. <laughs> um. So. The other thing I, I would I would I would I would add another bit of advice is don't try to I know we always want the original copy of this or that or this. Mm -hmm. If you can find it digitally, get it digitally and just print it out on your own. Do it that way. Don't pay the like. Here's the thing. I would love to have a copy of Star Wars imprint. I would love to have a guy. It aggravates me that the one year, the one year. I was getting married that year. I just forgot to sign up to Star Wars fan club and then sign up in 2009 and kept going until they stopped it. The one year I skipped was the one year they had exclusive fan fiction. Of Wouldn't course. you know? Well, I never even knew it came out till afterwards. I was like, you are kidding me. Cause I went back through my entire collection. I have 2001, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12. I was like, wait, what? Where's, Where's that one? I that was the year I got married. And I just must have forgotten. I was just I was just so aggravated. So is I that your white whale then? Or? But, but the thing is, the last the, not the last time, two last times I saw it, it went for fifty bucks mm -hmm. years ago, and I was like, no, I stopped at twenty. Twenty is the top. It's six pages, and it's Christy Golden, so yep. it's not even worth twenty bucks. But I'll pay twenty. <laughs> it went for fifty. Do you know how much it went for the last time it was there? I think it was last a year or so ago. Mm, Almost $400. No a wow. For. Sorry. I got it digitally. I printed it out, put it in one of my little volumes, and I'm happy. I That's don't need the, to buy uh, Quite, quite mm -hmm. the price per word on that. <laughs> yeah. I, you, you just, you let it go. You let it go. Yep. It, it's, it's, it's really not worth it. Well, again, it um, comes down to, it's the same thing as having a Legends banner on the piece of, of a, on a cover or something. It's still the same content that you're you know it's still the same content you might not have a pretty cover to go with it but you got same content same stories exactly. there exactly exactly it's still the same content it's still there um the thing the thing is though don't fret over it if you can get a digital copy of that short story that magazine or that whatever 
go that way. Well, Medicare can find that. Okay, well, I mean, unfortunately, Hungry Ewok is gone. The best <laughs> website ever that I kept alluding to in the very uh, Magic Expanded Universe. Whenever I did a short story, a lot of times I'd make a joke about Yub Nub eating bologna. I said, that's one Hungry Ewok. And that was a code to say, hey, go to this website before it gets shut down. Because <laughs> uh, I, uh, I remember the one thing, I'm going to take credit for this. I tracked down the author of Death in the Slave Pits of Lord. It was the only hyperspace exclusive fiction I could not find anywhere. And Aldrick Tolliver, I think was his name. I found him. I verified it was him. I said, where is that short story? I wanted to read it. I never got to read it because I love it's, it's from Galaxy of Fear too. characters, it's, Tasha Randa. It's her journal entry about what happened after Galaxy of Fear and what's going on with her, her uncle, who and her brother. He went, uh, he said, if you check around, you'll find it. Now, he emailed me like a week later. I was like, no, I won't. And a quick Google search. And there it was. He, he <laughs> uploaded it and let it go. And uh, I was so happy to get that. So happy. Um, that was something I'd been looking for for quite some time back in the day. Um, something I've been looking for quite some time. This is this is the 2014 uh, year when I was trying to track down everything. But uh, I, I, I want I want to switch it here. Is there something that you're really trying to get a hold of now that just it's just out of your grasp? If it's too rare, it's not worth it, or you just can't find it. Um. I'm never one of those really I have to have it kind of collectors, at least when it comes to Star Wars stuff. I like the hunt too much to to really desperately seek out something. Um, sure. I would say there are probably three things that are usually on my radar when I'm out searching for things, uh, which is the second and third uh, novels in the uh, Dark Empire. Or, I'm sorry, not Dark Empire. Um, uh, Dark Forces books trilogy. I'm still looking for the two, the second and third one of those because I still have the first one. Again, I like to look at those for used bookstores. That's where I found the first one. So I'll figure probably do the same thing there. And the uh, last item is another copy of Queen's Gambit because I need to have some security. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. In fact, I don't even need that one because I think everything's fine. Uh, yeah, no. By the way, I, I really need again. to come by your house again sometime. And yeah, I wonder me. why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just do but yeah uh dylan what about yourself i don't really have one um because i like it's not that it's not that it's difficult to get it's just like uh i'm missing legacy three in hardcover i have legacy one and two in hardcover i don't have legacy three and it's like that'd be a nice to have but it's not like i'm going out of my way to get for it uh, it's just kind of like a thing of like i'm looking for it and then one if those, i stumble if upon it it's like it, yeah yeah, it, but it's not like I'm like losing sleep over it kind of thing. I don't really have anything like that. I will say uh, kind of a, I guess, more advice on like uh, actually collecting as well is on on the topic of putting a list together, figuring out what you're going to spend. I think it's also very important to when you're just starting out to hit the big ticket items for like go for the big one, whatever, whatever one on the list is like the most expensive. Get that one first. Because that's going to kind of set the tone mm. for your collecting. And what that'll also do, because I don't think we've talked about this, condition is very important in collecting. Mm -hmm. And especially when with like older, rarer stuff, condition can be uh, uh, very varied. So by like, not only are you getting like the big one out of the way, the hardest one to find out of the way first by, by doing that, but you're also going to set the tone for like what condition the rest of your collection is going to look like if yep. you have if you have if you go go about it that way because that true. way when you get this when you get the uh, cheaper ones for example first it can be very easy to get like mint and then you look at like the the big ticket one in mint and you're just like oh that's like three to four times more expensive yeah, it's gonna say I don't that know if I can yeah. Too. yeah i agree no that's that's definitely a good point i agree on that too uh, also, if you get the big one out of the way first, it's probably best for you because you're not going to be collecting these all tomorrow. Uh, it's going to take you time mm -hmm. and it'll only be even more expensive by the time you get around to it again. And if you're in the position where you you start and you're like, eh, I'm not really into this. When you have the big ticket ones, they are much easier to to resell than when you have a bunch of the smaller ticket ones. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll Some find it you'll, you'll find it very a lot easier to kind of offload and and get your money back if you'd go about it that way. Mm. Now, 
I think uh, I think a lot of what we recommended to you wasn't just for books because I know there's a lot of people who like to collect the toys uh, out there too. I think mm-hmm. you can find a lot of that stuff. It's kind of the same deal. Um, I'm trying to think, I, I know a long time ago I was always looking for the uh, the Return of the Jedi uh, Luke Skywalker figure, which I eventually did find. Huh. <laughs> but well, yeah. uh, that. Uh, that uh, is like one of the few times I've actually tried to collect a toy. So I don't really have a lot of advice on the toys aside from I do see those in antique shops uh, every now and then. And used bookstores actually do have them from I think, time to time too. I think we all intrinsically know this and especially regular viewers of this podcast know this. But just in case there is someone out there, no, there is not a complete list of what you need anywhere on the internet. You are going to have to figure that out yourself. Yeah. That, is, that is just how it goes. And even to this day, we are still finding new things that we didn't even know existed. I, I'm, you can check my website. When you look at the chronolo- chronological thing. We're always adding new stuff to it. That's a great resource. But the thing is, though, it, Dylan is right. Is not is is not everything. It's not the. It's not a lot of the role playing stuff, which has short stories, which has magazines in it, which you know off put magazines that probably you know is that quasi canon uh, feature. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, just as Dylan said, there's always something new. Yep. Every time there's always something new, and new new additions, like because like new, if you're trying to put a hardcover, exa- if you're trying to put a hardcover uh, collection together, to my knowledge, there is not a complete list of all the hardcovers that are available, and that there's like two to three different sizes that the hardcovers are in as well, and there's not a complete. You're just you are just gonna have to do your own research and figure that out yourself. I'm sorry, yeah. there's just that resource just isn't out there. No one's there. Well, even now, even now, there's still new stuff coming out because, um, you know, they had the, uh, the, the games for uh, Knights of the Old Republic and a few other games have been releasing on the newer systems recently. But uh, one of these companies made the hard, uh, hard, you know, actual physical variants of these. And some of those are collector's editions. And one of those actually came out with like actual, you know, it's not going to show it, Pazak decks and stuff from the game that was in, in the collector's edition, like stuff like that. You're not going to find it very easily unless you're actively looking for it. And yeah. Uh, you know, there's going to be some material in there. Like I know for a fact, both the uh, collector's editions on uh, the first and second game that recently came out had a uh, source books in them, kind of like game guides, but they do have some lore in them too. And it's uh, it's just not stuff you're going to be able to find easily. Um, mm-hmm. And again, it's new. It's not stuff that, uh, you know, has been released any anytime recently. So, and I think we already said this, but just to reiterate, don't be afraid to walk away from a deal. If yep. it's, if it's too much, because especially at like if you're looking for at stuff at cons, for example, because con prices can be higher than what you would find in like a store. Like even if you know you need it, if the price just isn't there, don't be afraid to walk away. Like it, you, it's not worth it. I, I totally agree with that. It's not worth it. Don't break the bank. I know a lot of people stress over that kind of stuff. And it's so much. How am I going to afford it? Um, find a different method. Yeah. <laughs> Find a yeah, different well, method and that's part it. of the hunt too though part that. of the hunt is finding what you're looking for for the right price too that's important definitely absolutely absolutely um another thing that i wanted to talk about oh wait 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 one more thing i got one more thing i got uh was uh the, there are some things i'm looking for there are all those uk hard to find hardback yeah. editions of wild space no prisoners and the second mm-hmm. part of stealth and siege either siege stealth whatever it's called i have one book i will never get the second one it's like 300 and something bucks no <laughs> so guess what folks if i ever find a way to make my own print my own hardback of those that's where i'm going to go that's the route i will gladly go i'm not going to pay tons of money just to get my hands on a copy of that hardback you know even though i really want it I'm going to go the cheaper method. I'm not going to bring the bank. Oh, but Matt, you want that original? That'd be nice. But no, I just want it in hardback. That's basically what it is. So, you know, do what you can to get what you need. Uh, Now, wrapping up here, uh, they've announced a new wave of Essential Legends books coming out. I have no idea. Dylan was about to talk about prior to this thing. I said, well, let's do it live to get my reaction because I didn't know. So not announced. Go ahead. Oh, Not ahead. announced, like always. Th- these are leaks oh, leak. from the leak. Amazon listings. Pardon me. Posted. Pardon me, Lee. I didn't. This is news to me too. I haven't heard these yet. <clears throat> so wave. I forget what wave this is. Uh, this is but honestly, I, le- eleven or twelve, whatever it is, is going to consist of um, 
X-Wing Solo Command, the final book in the Ray Squadron trilogy, which we all expected, I think, because they've done one and two of the Ray okay. Squadron trilogy. I guess a uh, question is, are they going to continue with the Starfighters of Admar and Mercy Kill? But we'll see. I hope so. Starfighters is one of my favorites. Their, the be Han weird. Solo Adventures is what they're calling it, which isn't confirmed yet, but is most likely going to be the Brian Daly trilogy. Like, because they've just done the Lando, the uh, the Lando Adventures in the last That's wave. That's not bad. That's not so bad. I'll take that. Makes sense that they would do Han Solo Adventures. Um, I'm fine with that. I think Brian Daly's, in fact, when they collected, uh, yeah, when Barnes and Noble did AC Crispin's really beautiful three in one hardback, yeah. that was nice. I was like, I love it. I wish they would have done Brian Daly's, you know, <laughs> but I love it. I love uh, those Barnes and Noble three in ones they did were really nice. But anyway, go on, Dylan. That was that was interesting. And finally, it's not really a curveball, it's more of like a normal breaking ball because it's kind of out of the way, but not really. Uh, the Force Unleashed. Well, it's just that is definitely different. It's like not. Not the first pick, but you know, it's like, yeah, well, I, I, I say like that that is yeah. odd. I say that, but it's also one of the books we usually include in our donation events. See, it's not a curveball that's so far into the dirt, like Dawn of the Jedi into the void and like Knight Errant were, but you know, it's it's at least over the plate, you know. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Uh they don't normally announce the audiobooks in these um in these uh, no, typical, they don't right. Um, Force Unleashed and um, uh, the uh, Solo Command do not have an audiobook, but they've done an audiobook for um, Ray Squadron and Iron Fist. So I would almost. Um, oh, and uh, Lando, um, sorry, the Han Solo Adventures. They did a um, audiobook for the other two Ray Squadron's books. I'm pretty sure they're going to do one okay. for um, Solo Commands. They did not, however, announce an audiobook for the Lando Calrissian adventures, hmm. which probably means that maybe the Brian Daly Han Solo ones also don't get an audiobook. Hmm. And currently, there's a theory that Sam Whitworth, the voice actor for Star Killer, would do the audiobook for Force Unleashed because he also did it for Maul and Maul Shadowhunter when that one came out hmm. a few waves ago. That would be cool. So, but that's all speculation. They haven't been. Officially announced yet? Yeah, but they've uh, when they've shown up this way in the past in the waves, they've been accurate, correct? Yeah, every wave leak that's come from either Edelweiss or Amazon has been confirmed because they just scrape the data from like when they put up the listings. So, um, shout yeah. out to the people who are g browsing Edelweiss and, and Amazon for for Star Wars listings just to find to find or have a thing that like updates them. Anytime the Amazon website um, updates. So what are the chances they uh, they went to an AI artist for the covers this time? I don't know. Um, <laughs> they're, well, they're out of a public commando book. They got to stop doing there. that. I mean, those covers are killing me. Those terrible <sighs> they covers. They need to go to, like, the Japanese artists. Those Japanese covers are just great, like, awesome. They're so beautiful. So or even, beautiful, uh, what was it? Never, the, they'll some, never do it. They'll never do it. What was the, it. Uh, the Brazil covers were also good, too, right? Mm -hmm. The ones coming out of Brazil? Those were yeah, really they only had a few though, because they had the Haunt, uh, the Thrawn trilogy, Plagueis, and uh, Kenobi. I think were the only ones that got um, covers in Brazil, um, special so covers good. for Brazil. Fun fact, that by is. the way, about the Essential Legends collection. I just, I, it's a weird coincidence. In all the from all the ones that have come out and all the leaks, there have been thirty-seven books that have been enshrined into the Essential Legends collection. 37 books is the exact number of books if you count New Jedi Order, Legacy of the Force, and Fate of the Jedi combined. Interesting. <laughs> oh. The, the, number the guys, numbers, dude. man, strikes again. <laughs> See, he the still got it. Like, it's a weird he still got it, it, folks. He still got it. <laughs> That's but right. if, they, if they release the Essential Legends with just those books, we would now be done with, with the post-Jedi story. <laughs> hmm. Like four years. I know in. Geek Paddock is waiting for that Crystal Star announcement, but he's just gonna have to wait till the next wave. Again, if if Knight Errant and Dawn of the Jedi are are essential, then well, hey, where's the Jedi Academy trilogy? Anything go? Uh, you know what? What? What's it? Ruins of Dantooine will be the next one announced. I was gonna say, Races what are the odds edge. we see? Uh, what are the odds we see the Jedi Academy trilogy before you know Wave Twenty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Anything by Kevin J. Anderson. <laughs> Just no, yeah, nothing anything. by Wave 20. <laughs> anything. But anyway, so there you have it. Well, thanks for that. So 
some of that just you know it just my it's mind-boggling so there's no rhyme or reason how they let these kids go but 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 the thing is though they know they make money they wouldn't keep doing them folks if they weren't making money so it's a good That's thing true. they're doing it yep and if all they got is reprints i just wish they put more love into the covers and we've discussed this before if they could get permission i'm sure lucasfilm would say no to have each one of those authors write a little short story I would have a whole collection of essentials in my collection uh, right now. It would be uh, rebuying them all, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it would be yep. doing it for more than just uh, for the I, occasional twin I'm sons. I'm pretty sure Del Rey wouldn't get that permission. But either way, though. All right. So ask. <laughs> you can always ask and they'll say no. <laughs> but uh, that, that'll be it for now. Uh, folks, let us know in the in the comments, you know, what books are you trying to get? What's the trouble with collecting? In fact, if you want to write an article, Send it into the expandinguniverse.com. Go right ahead. Uh, I'd love to hear from other people and everything. I think that'd be awesome. The troubles and tri trials and tribulations of collecting. Because uh, Adam has his own special story. I haven't even touched what he's talking about. But uh, it, it's very interesting. And I want others to, you know, tell their story too, if you want. Either here in the comments or, or a nice little article. Would they be, uh... be interested in reading? Would they be asking for articles via email or is there another way to do that? Well, contact at the expanded universe. Yeah, you know, they just go to the website, hit contact us, and hit contact and submit the submit the story. But it was just a few paragraphs. Here's my gripes, here's my complaints, here's my here's my woes. You know, that'd be interesting too. And of course, don't forget the Twin Sons Foundation, uh, as they're doing their drive this whole year. A lot of fun stuff. Brian and Dylan, thank you so much for being a part of this again. Always fun. If it wasn't for you two, if it wasn't for this topic, I would have ended up just being me for the first time on a more civilized age. Uh, not very civilized. <laughs> I want to thank Ryan for not texting me back and showing that we're not really friends. And Meg for not toughing out her poor little. No, she's really sick. She's really I mean, sick. So. She even sent you, you know, some feedback, even though she couldn't be she here. Did, so. She did. So I'm not going to get on her. But anyway, folks, we'll see you next time. Have a good evening or morning.